Welcome everybody to the Successful Spiritualpreneur Podcast. Today on this episode, I'm super excited. We have a very special guest for you. His name is Ima. And uh, Ima weaves transformational coaching with the wisdom of plant medicine to support entrepreneurs, healers, coaches, and business leaders to drop into a state of heightened focus, align with the truth, and rise into the most authentic expression of their power. He's a trauma-informed, somatic-oriented facilitator with 10-plus years of experience training and coaching people all around the world, as well as running retreats and ceremonies. He has started and run multiple six-figures coaching businesses and taken hundreds of people through his coaching programs and consulting processes. With a master's in nonprofit management and a focus on social entrepreneurship and innovation, he is the former co-founder and executive director of Renew, a nonprofit organization that ran transformation workshops in th of, for thousands of young people all around the world to learn to love themselves and live their dreams. He also is the founder of Leaders of the New Era, providing transformational retreats and coaching programs customized for companies. Welcome, Ima, to the show. Thank you, brother. Thanks for having me. I love it. I'm really excited today. Um, because I get to have tea and hang out with the best people on the planet. So yeah, first of all, let's uh, get you introduced to our guest. So if you briefly want to just, you know, share your story of how you became the person you are today and what you're doing and what fires you up, that would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So like you shared in the bio, um, a lot of the work actually started in working with kids. You know, it's like my my journey and my path led me to uh, really coaching, transformational workshops, camps, summits uh, in East Africa, in Tanzania, which then led me to pursue my master's degree and got me into the entrepreneurship space. And um, this was in Arizona, really like carving into the new entrepreneurial uh, incubators here in Arizona. And I'm from Sedona, which is where I'm at now. And from there is the path continued to wind and turn that led me to, um, you know, speaking on stages and in, in different places around the world and um, shifting the coaching work to adults. And so the life coaching became business coaching, the business coaching, um, you know, and, and this weaves into the path about seven or eight years ago, uh, where plant medicine came came into my life in a really beautiful way. And so it was kind of running concurrently alongside all of the coaching work. And uh, a couple of years ago, it became a, a really predominant part of the work and, you know, supporting people in ceremonies, running retreats, programs. Um, and now as we integrate all the aspects of our life, everything has uh, really beautifully come together. And I'd say like all the worlds have merged into one. Um, which sometimes can take some time in the entrepreneurial journey, as we know. And so in the merging of worlds, now everything is consolidated into really many offerings, but one expression. And what it looks like in this last piece you shared is it's really well expressed in um, this new organization, Leaders of the New Era, which is customized plant medicine retreats, programs, and and one-on-one -on -one coaching for uh, businesses and companies. And so... Um, yeah, the path has taken me in different directions, my own healing, supporting people in their healing, um, building lots of different businesses, right? I'm an entrepreneur. I'm also a manifester in human design. So there's always something new coming out of me. Uh, and so what I'm really passionate about is, and I always have been, is just helping people bring their ideas to life, right? Like supporting people with their innovation. Sometimes I call myself a, a spiritual midwife for for spiritual entrepreneurs it's like whatever that idea is probably similar to you it's like in its own way helping somebody bring it to life by birthing it and sometimes the birthing process is where i feel like my my mastery uh, comes through um so yeah that's a little bit about me in a short way i love it that's great fantastic and so i had a question about what do you mean by the merging of worlds you know, because it seems like we're a very special time right now in the universe. Um, however, how, however far time exists, that's another conversation. But what do you mean by the merging of worlds when, that you mentioned? Yeah, we won't go too deep down the rabbit hole with that one, but I'm sure we, we probably could if we, if we wanted to. In that case, what I mean is, although it's a really good question, um, you know, for me, I can, 
you know, especially in entrepreneurship, they say specialize your skills. Yeah. Like it's, it's useful to be a, a specialist. What I find is also true is that people are really multidimensional and like source spirit, God, goddess, however you, you know, put the name on the label will lead us down different tracks of passion. And ultimately what we choose to do and offer as our work is up to us. But, and I see this with other people in my own life, it, it took me down very specific tracks. And it, when I was inside of the track with a narrow focus, I thought that was going to be the only thing. So when I was supporting teenagers, I thought this was the rest of my life. When I was supporting adults with coaching, I thought this was the rest of my life. When I was a business coach, I thought this was the rest of my life. In this last couple of years, when I'm running retreats and holding plant medicine ceremonies, I thought this was the rest of my life. For some reason, wow. we put on these we put on these blinders, um, and I think it's helpful, you know, from to some extent because we become really focused. But and when I say the merging of worlds, I mean the I would say the satisfaction. It's a very satisfying feeling of having everything make sense and come together in one because now. I'm able to combine the ceremonies, the work and coach, the business coaching, mm-hmm. the support of the entrepreneurs, even now weaving in again, the support and uh, for children and teenagers, which is not yet something I've, I've shared yet, but um, it's sometimes you wait for the things that you're passionate about to come back to the forefront. You don't know that's the mystery. How are they going to come in? You know, they leave for a season and then they're always going to come in. And so, uh, yeah, I always tell people be patient, but, there's always like a, you know, some, some, some influence up there is designing and weaving the web in a way that I think we don't fully understand. And so it's good to just listen and be patient and trust that, um, okay, I did this for a reason. I see that a lot of entrepreneurs, right? It's like almost like shaming themselves. Why did I go down this like long path, right? Some people will go, why did I go? Why was I in corporate America for 10 years? Or why was I building websites for 15 years? Or why was I coaching people? You know, it can be easy to, to, to ask when you don't understand why you're in something. It's like being in a long relationship and then ending it. it you don't mm. understand why did I go through this? And so there's a lot of healing when and a lot of purpose gets created when you when you merge the worlds together. And so it's also something I think that's like useful coaching work for people, supporting people and merging their worlds. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I see that in my work too as a designer and, you know, uh, owner here at Love Pixel Agency, that the more you're able to visually, you know, as a designer, everything is about visuals, uh, visually represent the layers of people the more depth the brand becomes, the more depth you can communicate visually. And the more depth you can communicate visually, that's still understandable because sometimes you can also create crazy artworks that don't really serve a purpose. But if you can create depth within something that's understandable for a person on the outside, then um, that really communicates somebody's multi-dimensionality, you know, and somebody's just wow this is a well-rounded wise old soul you know so i can totally relate to that from my field of work and i think as life goes on it's just really beautiful that you brought that up because i think yeah a lot of people say oh why did i do this why do do that i think at the end of the day it just adds another layer and it can possibly be a very beautiful one you're right if you Mm -hmm. choose to make that a part of what you do now somehow it doesn't have to be the main focus but somehow how does that experience influence you now? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's even really- true for me within my name, right? It's like I used to go by Adam. Now I go by Ima. And there was a point for me in the branding process, even with you guys, it's like now I'm to the point where I would be able to explain and return back to the website and say, okay, because it requires, you can't, you know, you can't present yourself. This is what I really find people struggle with. It's hard to come forward when you're still in the confusion of old energy, when you've claimed Mm. a new energy, right? So it's like, I've claimed this new name, but if my branding is still Adam, but I'm not even sure how to, how to present Ema, you're in what I call like the liminal, the black, the void, the in-between, right? And this is so many entrepreneurs are in this right now, so many clients, but I also know because I've been going through this these last couple of years, it's like, the major death of everybody in COVID, but people still haven't peeked out of the cave. We're still not yet in the full rebirth. 
And so from a branding perspective and on, for people's entrepreneurial identities, I think a lot of people are not clear. People like I'm finding clarity is a really big medicine for people right now. People aren't quite clear. It's hard to move forward with direction and like masculine energy, which creates results when you don't, when you're not clear on where you're going. And in this case, it's so deep that it's not just the lack of clarity of where you're going. It's the lack of clarity created by a giant ego death that people want to want to come out of. Right. So that, that would be one challenge. Like, oh, okay. As a brand specialist, like, what do you, what's your clarity? You know, can you be clear? It's so essential for you guys to help create the clarity for people. Right. But that's like a whole other level of confusion. It's like a spiritual crisis. It's an existential crisis. Right. So I don't know. I've just seen this really, I've seen this recently for a lot of people that were just now emerging out um, but many people are, are are still coming out of it. And so it'll be interesting to see what happens next. Yeah. Yeah, I think collectively there's a big, you know, it's just so much change going on. That's everybody kind of feels they're still part of the old game, but there's a new game on the table and everybody's trying to like readjust and so many levels, not just spiritually, but also technologically, you know, with AI coming through and all these kinds of new technologies that just really create a lot of question marks in people's heads, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited because, you know, I read, I read a lot of spiritual literature, especially people who channel. Um, mm -hmm. I feel very drawn to that type of material. And um, they always just say, listen, everything happens for a reason. You know, it's a, such an accepting, you know, stoic philosophy. And yeah that always gives me reassurance because sometimes you know we make things so real in the world like oh my god i have to be this person i have to make this much money and i have to do this and do that and i want to do this and do that <sighs> you know what i mean there's like i don't know you know i mean a big book that influenced my spiritual journey was a course in miracles and i'm not sure if you know about that book but it talks all about how you know, the return to love, you know, changing your perception from fear to love in any given moment. And really, if we're able to do that in, in any given moment with ourselves, with our mind, life gets so blissful. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I love this conversation. I'm just deciding how like deep to go into it. But I, I feel you on this piece of um, like, how good i i almost see it as like the playing with the barometer of like resistance right so for i really i really resonate with what you said around coming forward and then there's the ai pieces and there's these different things but what i notice even within myself as a barometer is like that that proves what you say is true is anytime you try to to do something the way you might try to try to have done it like two years ago it's not working this is like true for so many people. Yeah. You're like, oh, well, this, you know, this is the way I used to run the business a couple of years, or I used to run programs like this cup. So I've, and to be completely transparent, this is why I stepped away from the coaching industry in general, because there were already a lot of things that were not resonating with me. I can, I could like feel the stagnation. It wasn't stagnant yet energetically. It was actually like flowing really well, but it, <clears throat> Just personally, there were a lot of things that started to feel inauthentic and um, oversaturated and, and almost like becoming generic and um, driven by ego. And none of that is wrong, not from like a standpoint of like right or wrong. It's just like I've personally felt out of resonance and needed to move in a different direction in order to create space for it to become more authentic and like aligned for me over time. That was just my personal journey. But I suspect a lot of people... Um, are are in that or have been in that and as i'm now returning from a very new place like a new vibration of like okay this is what feels really good for me and so i can like put my energy into it and move forward i'm noticing and now in conversations i'm hearing uh nothing it works the way that it used to it's like we're in a whole new um we're in a whole new rodeo. So I don't know. I'd be also curious to hear from your side because you're like inside um, the mechanics of the system. 
right? I'm like in a different place. You're inside like the, you're, it's almost like you're in like the, the operating room, seeing how everything's working yeah. at the ground level. Yeah. Yeah. We've, um, I mean, we see a lot of the insides of people's businesses, you know, in, in our agency and I mean, the, the base mechanics, right. Are still the same because humans work still the same, right? It's just the, the tools that people are using to do that stuff, like sending emails, writing this, doing this, creating content, they have changed so much or things content creation has become so easy that so many more people are doing it now mm. right which is a great thing but that brings you back to how can you be different and see i think i think it creates on, on one level it creates so much like superficial content that you draw on to the deeper stuff that's what mm. i think it does because you know? mm. Even for myself, like I did, you know, like short term video content for a couple months now. And I just noticed that every time I use that like formula or script of like hook, context, three key takeaways and kind of like call to action, it's just like, eh, it doesn't even yeah. like, it doesn't even fulfill. I don't know if that touches anyone anymore. Um, but on my soul level, I'm just like, eh, why create that if it's so scripted? You know what I mean? Mm. Is there something that like does move you more deeply? And do you like, where do you, what do you think's like the, if somebody was coming to you as like an entrepreneur of like, okay, how do I make my, um, not even how do I make myself unique? Cause we already are unique, but how do like I align with where, like the truth of where we're going? Yeah. Well, I think it always comes back to following your excitement, you know, because you follow your excitement you are just being authentic to who you are in that moment and overall, right? Mm -hmm. um, and on a business level, do something that you love doing. You love coaching people. You like love hanging out with people. You know, do something around that. You love tea, do something around tea. You know, you love what are the topics that you really resonate with? And this is really a great time to reposition yourself and restart relaunch something in the direction you actually want to go to if you're not doing that already right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i think yeah that that that's what it that's what it comes back to because at the end of the day if you're unique like nobody's like you you understand nobody's like Ima. nobody's like christian like i am such a unique person and most people just know me for my web design skills you understand mm-hmm there's so much more. It's just that that's just the surface level that what people, you know, know me for, you know, and that's fine, but we can get to know each other deeper and we can do other stuff together. You know what I mean? Yeah. They got to share a tea with you in person to really get, dig into the deeper layers. Yeah. And I think that is what a lot of people are doing on social media right now. Like they're starting to have real conversations, deeper conversations, you know? Mm. Yeah, I've really noticed too, you know, we're in the Aquarian age. And so without even needing to like talk about it with people, what I notice is like people really, I feel more drawn to collaboration, right? Aquarian's all about collaboration, community, changing things at the systems level, which is already my moon sign. So I'm, I'm more driven. I get very unexcited very fast if I create I, I won't even create it. But even if I get invited into something or if I'm like trying to put my energy into like a, a surface shift, which might motivate other people. It's like, I need to have the bigger systems level, process level, like dynamic revolution, yeah? It's like, that's the Aquarian energy is about like creating revolution, creating really big change for where we're headed, but it can take longer. And so, but it's also at the communal level. So you have to, it's like encouraging us to work with other people, which has its own challenges. We're out of like individualistic, so I'm just, I'm bringing this up because this, I think is the energetic, the business energetic that's playing out in business right now in entrepreneurship. And it's kind of counterintuitive, right? Entrepreneurship is all about being an entrepreneur, right? Solopreneur. And I, even though it sounds great being an entrepreneur in collaboration, I don't actually think people practically were figuring out in real time how to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of, it has a lot of tricky pieces because then you have to interface. And, but what I found 
personally really exciting for myself is I've just decided, for example, with all of my clients to just right off the bat, invite in the collaboration. So it's like, even as we were talking before this podcast, it's like, oh, let's run a retreat together. Oh, let's, it's like that skipping mm. all of the other steps for me with wow. the client. Like, here's what I'm going to, and this is what I've been inviting in people. It's like, here's what we're going to create. But it, like in the course of our coaching, we're going to run this retreat together because it's going to elevate your leadership skills. It's going to give you a platform. I'm going to push you onto the platform so that people can see what you're, you're made of if you wouldn't choose to do that by yourself. So instead of like walking with somebody to, it's like, no, this is what we're going to do. And we're going to do it together. And it, there's not going to be any like pedestal or difference. It's going to be like a complete split and a complete share. Um, and personally, that's what I want anyways, right? It's like wow. I'm just choosing into what I want. I just want to spend time in person with the person and run a retreat with them and like feel that level of transformation. And then once I've, what I've learned from it is by just choosing that powerfully and saying yes to it right off the bat, you realize how easy some of these things are. I think you said something earlier. Yeah. It's like we overcomplicate, but how easy is it, right? To just like jump on a plane to Florida, run a retreat. You know, there's nothing, there's actually nothing complicated about these things, but somewhere maybe in the virtual space or all the COVID energy, I don't know. Some, somehow something has shifted that I've noticed where if you choose the easy thing that creates the impact, and the feeling that you want, which for a lot of people is like these transformational in-person experiences. Um, not only is it what everybody's waiting for you to share and invite them into, but there's not really many logistics. There's not, it's not so many logistical complications. Something can be as easy as you want it to be. So I'm excited because I think that's, that's what I'm noticing is where we're headed, is like mm. pairing everything down to really simple, really impactful really fun, right? Like really like enjoyable. And um, yeah. finally meeting all these people in person we've been seeing on screens for four years. So if that's even the only thing for me, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked about it. I'm stoked on where, where things are headed. And maybe that's the answer to the confusion and the in-between, you know? Okay, yeah. You don't know what to do with your business right now. It's like a little bit confusing. J jump on a plane and go like, hang out with the person that you've been like working with and go create something together. Right. It's like, yeah. to me, this is, we're in the year of the creator. I feel it's like, go create something together. Go like brainstorm, go have a tea with Christian and jump on the whiteboard and like, see what pops up, you know, and how you're like, mm -hmm. can, can, can weave together to me. That's way more, that feels way more fun. That's like following the excitement. Like what you said. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's such a great, that's such a great insight. I really am so excited about that because I feel, yeah, you've literally just said what was on my mind for, you know, these many months and that I was in my, like, am currently in that transformation of like, okay, well, I kind of like mastered the web design systems piece and, you know, doing that still for so many clients and I really just, you know, want to be with people. Right. Let's hang out mm -hmm. together. Let's create cool stuff together, you know, mm -hmm. because I like that. I like creating websites, but how epic would it be if we do it together? Mm hmm. You know, well, I've and even pictured stuff like, how cool would that be? I would do that. I would fly out to hang out with you for like a week. And then it's almost like you just bring in your person that does the video to capture it like as a ninja. Right. So that we're, it's like not noticing. And then organically, you're like turn the process upside down. So now instead of like trying too hard to think of what to create together, we're really just in the play and the fun and the exploration and the co-creation. And then as a result, I probably you'd probably be like, oh, hey, by the way, Ima, I ha this is the video that got created for you. Uh, how would you like to use this? Like to me, I would really vibe with that because you could create like a little mini documentaries, mini reels, uh, you know, almost like an exploration of the brand of who is Ima, but uh, in a way that was like so unscripted and so organic uh, just because mm. I showed up with you in person. Yeah. It's like a, an immersive brand retreat deep dive. That's like very unlogical how you not really how people do this where it's picking the left brain, but just like 
drinking tea and being in the right brain and like, you know, having fun com spiritual conversations like this. Yeah. Real, like real content, you know, just like being, being in this space. So. Wow. Anyways, bro, there's a, that's a great idea for you. I'll, I'll be your, I'll be yeah. your guinea pig. I'll be your guinea pig. For, I'll, I'll for, come do that. For program. us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's really, I think it's really, um, it's, it's a big symbol for me that you're the first person on my podcast, you know? Mm -hmm. It's always about, you have to look at symbols, you know? Totally. I, I feel honored. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited and curious what we're going to create together in the future. Um, so yeah and if somebody else would want to do that in their business how would you suggest they go about it let's say another coach you know to use the strategy of like hey just just do this or that whether it's a retreat or something else like what are other how, how could they do that you mean building out um like their own offering that that might be their own expression of that yeah, and or just very simple down to like d down to the down to the bones. Like hey, you just like ask everybody who on boards you. Hey, do you want to do a potential retreat together, or you make it part of your coaching program, or how how does it work with with your in your case? Um, it's a great question. I just launched a retreat right before we jumped onto this podcast, so it's a timely it's a timely uh, a question, and it's in collaboration with a new collaborator uh, who has her own company. This really sweet medicine sister, Chandra. Um, so it's a good question because in a way we just explored this whole process together. Mm -hmm. Um, to me, it's so, and we, and actually the, the tie, you know, back to you and I here to, to bring everybody into the fold is, um, we both had separately done the same Noya Rao diet in Peru, right? We've been part of like doing this, this dieta in Peru with, with the tree of light. And so in a way, I think that the master plant like has woven, so I would say from a spiritual perspective, let things unfold, you know, in terms of like who you're meant to work with. I've tried other collaborations where spirit is like, nope, you're not doing that. Right. But then I find in terms of collaboration, um, when you're really guided into it and it, you can feel the difference, you can feel when it's like really easy and there's like a compatibility and it really goes beyond like running charts and seeing if you're good collaborators, it's just like in your heart where spirit leads you to. So that's the first piece that I think is really important because if that energy match isn't there, it won't work well, right? It really does. I've, I've been through so many different types of collaborations that don't work well. So first really important piece is like, you know, trusting like where you're guided in the creation and then following your excitement. You know, for us, this is like a pilgrimage with plant medicine through Sedona here where I live. So I, I'm just, I'm always creating the thing that I want to participate in. I never overthink like, what do people want wow. inside of a retreat? No, I, like what would be the most unique thing that's not, doesn't exist. There's so many retreats here in Sedona and like there's so many transformational things, but I can tell you there's not a Wachuma pilgrimage through like the different parts of Sedona. So I'm creating the thing that I want out of a program, even if I don't understand logistically how it works, right? So this one has like a hybrid incubator as an extension to support people from plant medicine into entrepreneurial excellence. It's so unique that I'm not even sure how it's going to operate yet logistically. Right. <laughs> but, but I'm excited about it because it's intention and it's prayer is to supercharge people's entrepreneurial creative energy and then to expand them into like infinite creative potential. Right. It would be like this, like, infinite branding session and then it's like okay now what do we do with all of this energy and that's the the types of medicines that we're using are like specifically for breaking through creative energy and opening up like the field of possibilities and then we're going to do all these these special healing modalities around that right so it's not about so this would be the other thing i would tell people is follow your own ethos i don't follow the ethos of like people come to spaces to heal because then I think we get it stuck in loops and healing traps and stagnation. I just get, I invite people into what do you want to create? You're an infinite creator. What do you want to create? And let's get you creating that thing because that's always going to align somebody. They're going to heal through that intention 
and align into the energy of like joy and excellence and success and abundance. So then from a logistical standpoint, if somebody was like, you know, I don't even think you need to have a coaching business. If, if for example, if you wanted to run your retreats and back to the example I just shared with clients, I think this would be the easiest way to explain it. None of them are running, re not many of them, not none of them, but not many of them are like running retreats or have things structured out in this way. Keep things like so simple, right? You want to run a, a retreat. I like to invite people into, okay, find somebody to work with you sometimes who has done it before. So for me, I take all the pressure away from my clients because I've run like a hundred retreats in different ways or ceremonies. Yeah. So there's, there's nothing to think about structurally. I just plug them into where they're supposed to go. I take care of the rest, rent out an Airbnb, keep things really simple, choose logistically into the thing that makes sense for the both of you, assign roles and don't overcomplicate things. Right. So just like start where you're at. And I think it's a brilliant way for people to create momentum because I wouldn't have said this in the past, but from like a business coaching perspective, if you followed your inspiration, you could do a low cost weekend retreat on Friday night and Saturday night, you make 15 grand, invite those people from the retreat into a, a, like a beta of a program, the first launch of a program that's low cost, and then enroll people from that program as one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. And then within four months, you could have a six figure coaching business, to be honest, like quite easily. So I think because once you start to see the sequence, like um, it's really helpful to have a strategy and like a, an, an action plan. And if that's what you want to do, um, it's not difficult. But again, this Aquarian age that we're in, get people in a room to like feel you and be in the resonance with like your energy. I, I don't think, I think where we're at now, it would be very like if you did a branding workshop in Florida that was low cost and people were in the room with you, I feel like that I would go to that. That would be a home run. But if like you did like an online summit, I don't think I would go. Right. Because I think, I think maybe people are um, fatigued, fatigued. And now they don't oversaturated, fatigued, exhausted, um, they want to feel you. People want to feel you. And so I think that's like the only important thing I would share with entrepreneurs is like, do whatever you want. It doesn't matter what you do, but get people in a room with you so that you can like let people feel your heart and share your gifts and don't overthink where it needs to go after that. Don't like future plan or future trip around it. Just like listen. And this is what I'll do. I'll finish like a thing and I don't have any plan sometimes. And then I'm listening. Okay. Like what's authentic? what's authentically next sometimes nothing sometimes it's like okay bye everybody it's that's what's true and sometimes it's like hey i can feel there's another layer of support here here's what my um here's what feels exciting to me here's where my energy is taking me and usually if you come from that place you find a yes love that yeah thank you for sharing all that in in detail and uh we're coming up on the last 10 minutes of our podcast so i want to shift the conversation a little bit towards the softwares and tools you use to make that happen so feel free to you know share any insights or whatever hacks or little tricks you found like yeah i'd use this or i used to use that but this works so much better and stuff mm -hmm. like that because Really what this podcast is about is to create a new generation of successful spiritual entrepreneurs and yeah, however we can help them. Uh, fantastic. Um, well, you know, to weave this last piece in, I think simplicity, like I don't, I, 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 this is one thing that has never changed for me. Um, when I'm inviting people into something, I send them a text message. Right. And, and that strategy might feel uncomfortable for some people, but I, it doesn't ever feel uncomfortable for me because one, I'm a manifester. It's my strategy yeah, to inform and to initiate. So it's not necessarily everybody's strategy, but for me from, you know, um, people appreciate intimacy and connection. 
right? It's just like develop relationships. The people I invite in are my friends, not strangers. And I use either like WhatsApp or text message um, or Telegram. And I share with people. Why? Because I really believe in it. There's no reason for me to not feel confident in bringing somebody into something because the creation is amazing. I would want to be a part of it. So if you're authentically creating something you would want to be a part of, um, then I intuitively, okay, like, and I'm not sending messages to everybody, right? It's like intuitively who is supposed to be a part of this? Everybody else, um, I like using Flowdesk as a tool right now. I used to use um, Active Campaign, and I'm really appreciating Flowdesk because, you know, you can, uh, everything is built in together and you can create landing pages as emails, right? So that's a really nice hack for somebody starting out low cost is, if you like to be part of the creative process, I love designing and creative. It's a part of me that I don't always have time for, but in another world, I would be probably part of Love Pixel, you know, uh, designing designing and creating and, and building things out because I'm, I'm good at it and I like it. So yeah, that's important. I think follow like your zone of, your zone of genius. Don't waste time if you don't like doing that. For me, uh, I like being able to express my energy. And so Flowdesk for landing pages as email templates, as opt -in, with opt-in forms, even now with checkout pages. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't, I don't, I don't really use many systems. I find that most people just find me. Um, it's super simple. Yeah. It's like create on Canva share as messages and through email and like to me stick where people know that you're at and and don't spread yourself too thin in like too many places hmm i love that well and get, and get yourself a website obviously you know like that goes without saying get yourself a <laughs> website Get yourself a love fix website. Yeah, you know, you know, people come to us when they're ready. It's 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 all good, you know. And I think, I mean, even like, you know, anybody who is in my field that started out, I think most people built the website themselves when they start out, and it's totally fine, you know. And then once you're ready for, once your ecosystem has grown, once you had multiple offers, once you need just more system in your, you know, eco ecoverse, then you build it. You know, but in the beginning, you don't need a lot of systems. It's better if it's simple, you know? I agree. And so, I think to the clarity point from before, it's like, um, I had to learn that lesson as an entrepreneur, right? Of of like overgrowing, overbuilding the team before, and then you don't know like what to tell people to do. Um, you're trying to like invest into websites and it actually creates more probably, you know, like from your perspective, it's like more work for people when you're like not clear with them. And that can be like the symptom yeah. of, trying to grow too fast, right? So, you know, good to be clear and experiment. I think that's an inherent to entrepreneurship, yeah? It's good to experiment and like create a bunch of things and then be like, oh, this is who I am. And then hand it off to the person who's helping you grow. Sweet, I love that. And um, yeah, with that, uh, I think it's, it's a wrap and I would love for people to get in touch with you. So. If you have any, you know, links, websites, et cetera, you want to share with us, that's, uh, I think, a good time to do. Totally. Yeah. I think the easiest way to do it right now is just Instagram at Eagle and Condor. Uh, you can just follow me there, send me a message and, and um, yeah, looking forward to connecting with people further. Sweet. Amazing. And one last question, because I'm personally intrigued, so I have to ask it. Um, why Eagle and Condor? Mm. Yeah, I just made a post about this yesterday. So if people want like the deep dive story, funny enough, um, I and what I shared in the post, what, the eagle and condor is the eagle and condor prophecy. So it tells about the the eagle and the condor flying Ooh. together in the sky, the north and the south, which is representative of us in the north, like almost the technology of the north um, and the wisdom and the medicine of the South, the condor of the South and the eagle of the North. And so the prophecy says that like symbiotically we're like ushering, which is now we're ushering into this era where the only way is to like work together 
in order to fly together in the sky. So we will need, and you're seeing it happen, right? The plant medicines of the South and the Amazon emerging out of the jungle after thousands of years. But also, how do we symbiotically support, instead of taking advantage of the resources of the South, how do we, instead of using our technology to overpower and overdominate, come together to create like a better future? And so this was part of something that um, people have their own interpretation of what, what it's going to look like. I believe it's happening now. The perspective I have actually is that how do we leverage the businesses and the innovators and the entrepreneurial spirit of the North, all of this like ego energy, this creative, more masculine energy that brings things into form, but influenced by all the culture and the wisdom and the medicine of the South, like using that inherent deep feminine wisdom that's connected into the earth, what would our businesses and our future look like if we created with like an altar of the South and the medicine infusing into the creative, innovative energy of the North? What businesses would we create if that was the foundation? What change would we create and would we ignite? How would we run our businesses sustainably to benefit the planet and support the people and the children, right? Instead of this old hyper-masculine, old paradigm bad for the earth, unsustainable approach that is um, the shadow side of capitalism. But I don't think sh capitalism, I think it's a beautiful thing. It could be leveraged as the thing that changes the planet. And that's what I think that the prophecy is, is really speaking to, is we need to not like dismiss the whole thing, but blend the energies together so that we can all symbiotically support each other so that we all thrive. And so... Um, yeah, that's eagle and condor. It's representative of the of the the prophecy. It's also the balance of the masculine and the feminine, um, and it has revealed itself. I didn't know when I chose that handle why I was choosing it. To be completely honest, and I talk about that in the post, um, it's only revealing itself now. I have the eagle and the condor tattooed on both of my arms. The eagle on on the right side and the condor on the left side. And even when that happened many many years ago, I didn't understand why it was happening. So. Um, yeah, Interesting. So back in the wow. beginning of the conversation, right? It's like sometimes things merging of worlds, things take time to um, integrate and make sense. Sometimes we just follow our guidance yeah. and it takes a few years to pick up the pieces. Yeah. And yeah, as you said, it you know perfectly ties into the beginning where we're talking about merging all these layers. And I think at the end of the day, um, one thing we haven't really talked about is like, what's success, right? It's successful spiritual preneur podcast. Like what is success? Well, everybody has to define it for themselves, right? But for me, ultimately, it always comes back to like balance, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, if it's too much money and too much work and too much this, too much that, you don't get to enjoy, you don't get to be with your family, you don't get to be in the moment, you don't get to, to what's the point? You know what I mean? Just might as well just not do it then. You know what I mean? So, Yeah. With that being said, uh, I think that's a beautiful conversation for another podcast. That what is success, but ultimately, like for me, oftentimes it's come back to just balance and harmony. And I think your your name, your Instagram handle, represents that perfectly. So, thank you for that incredible, incredible, beautiful conversation. And um, I'm excited to see and hear more of you. And yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me, brother. It's good chatting with you. Likewise. Bye. Ciao.